Sylvia Crawley, Marion Jones, Charlotte Smith, Stephanie Lawrence, Tanya Sampson, the starters for Carolina, Pam Thomas, Amy Brown, Deborah Williams, Raquel Spurlock, and Vicki Johnson for the Lady Texters. Remember Amy Brown starting with a very sore ankle. It is taped up. How far she can go, we'll wait and see. But the junior from Livingston, Tennessee, looked very spry in the warm-ups, encouraging her younger teammates. There she is, Amy Brown. Look for North Carolina, Tim, to, to really try and get up and down the court, control the pace of the game, make it fast. And Louisiana Tech, what they did against Alabama, held them 20 points under their average, held them to 66 points. So Louisiana Tech is the type of team that is going to slow things down, control the tempo. They'll run when they can, but they want to take North Carolina out of a running game and scoring so many points. The Lady Texas beat Alabama 69 to 66. Carolina eliminated Purdue 89 to 74. Carolina controls the opening cap. Samson missing the first shot, rebounded by Deborah Williams. Talked to both coaches before the game and they said rebounds because North Carolina is so tall. Louisiana Tech said we've got to rebound the ball. And North Carolina feels that they've got to rebound the, wall, rebound the ball to get their running game going. Amy Brown trying for three, and that misses. Marion Jones, the speedy freshman, her pass blocked away right back to her. Charlotte Smith off target. Thomas rebounds. The smallest player on the court at 5-3. And Thomas lets fly. That won't drop. Rebounded by Crawley. Sampson comes away for North Carolina. Feet inside to Crawley, wasn't quite ready for it. Car heels control, and it is Stephanie Lawrence with the opening point. Lawrence is a 41% shooter from three-point range. She's a very quiet player on this team because you look at the four others, they're so dynamic in their personalities. But Lawrence is a player that really holds them together as far as doing the little things. 6-1 junior from Morrow, Georgia. Vicki Johnson replies for the Lady Texters. It's 3-2. Charlotte Smith used all the rim. Battles for the rebound and the first no at the travel call. North Carolina really looking to get the ball inside and penetrating against this Tech defense. Sylvia Hatchell in her eighth year at Carolina, 32 and two more coach of the year in many of the polls this season. Number most four deserved, ranked team. Most deservedly so, too. In the USA uh, during this past season, the number three seed in the East region. Here they are in the championship matchup. Deborah Williams missing. It's rebounded by Sampson, and Sampson comes down grabbing her foot. And she's been playing with a sore groin. Might have got stepped on there rebounding. She struggled a little bit yesterday as far as foul trouble and really hurt them as far as North Carolina being out of the game. Looks like she just kind of slapped down on it with her own body weight. Well, you don't know what really happened because of the outside of the foot. There obviously was no twist or anything, but you never know with those nerves in there. Good pressure defense by Louisiana Tech. North Carolina does not have a true point guard. Marion Jones is converted at the point, does not have a strong left hand. I mean, she, her speed and quickness is incredible. But as far as handling the ball, somebody like a Pam Thomas, who is a true point guard, North Carolina is going to have difficulty as far as taking care of the basketball. D. Johnson out for Deborah Williams. Williams driving the lane. No basket. And a push foul. Called by John Morningstar. He's from Westminster, Maryland. The other referee, Julian Porto, from Lakeland, Minnesota. Here you see the three guard offense for Louisiana Tech. Williams coming off a big tournament, scoring 24, 24 points, and 26. And then Pam Thomas directs things. and. There's a second personal foul on Marion Jones. I'm sure that Leon Barmore has told Pam Thomas to just take it right at Marion Jones. The only two losses that North Carolina has had this year is against Virginia. Second personal on Marion Jones. I was just going to finish, Tim, the, the freshman of the year in the ACC, Tora Suber, is a 5-4 freshman for Virginia. And she had 29 points and 24 points against North Carolina. Those were the only two losses. So they had difficulty guarding 
an aggressive point guard and small. Thomas, the 5-3 point guard for Louisiana Tech, connects from the free throw line. She was a big factor in the victory over Alabama, 21 points. But she's also bothered with a groin injury, as Sampson of North Carolina is, and it's 4-3 Louisiana Tech. Tanya Cooper is in for Marion Jones. She contributed seven rebounds in the victory over Purdue at 5-9, a sophomore from Chattanooga, number 21. Louisiana Tech is just really switching up their defense and getting two players on one. Another pushing foul charge. Leon Barmore felt that his team could not get in foul trouble, especially the post position, because of the height disadvantage his team has. So he knew that they're going to have to concentrate on screening out, and right now, North Carolina is having a tough time going to the boards. Charlotte Smith picked up the foul for Carolina. Texter's lead, Amy Brown in and out. Rebound by Smith. Sampson back quickly. Sampson drives to the baseline, but she's cut off at the pass there by Spurlock. Spurlock, a big block right there. Spurlock coming off a career high, 18 rebounds against Alabama yesterday. Vicki Johnson missing, rebound Amy Brown. Bad pass right there. The steal by Vicki Johnson. Missed the shot. And finally it's taken away by Smith and a foul called on Vicki Johnson. Great hustle by Louisiana Tech on their defense. Sylvia Hatchell not pleased with the way her team is handling the basketball. Somebody has to take charge and that's going to have to be Tanya Sampson, the senior. Three times first team all ACC. Leads North Carolina in career points and scoring average 17.4. 30 points against Connecticut, 16 against Purdue. Charlotte Smith won't drop for her and Amy Brown rebounds. 6-3, Louisiana Tech lead. Thomas using Amy Brown. Now off for Johnson, Vicki Johnson can't get her shot away. And it'll be Tanya Sampson charged with a foul. Fourth team foul on Louisiana Tech. And we have a timeout on the floor with 15.46 to go first half. A 6-3 lead, Louisiana Tech. We try to play pressure defense. Uh, we're pretty big on the perimeter. And we've got some quickness. Uh, uh, we just try to uh, deny the ball about everywhere. and. Uh, create some offense off our defense, and we've been, uh, you know, pretty fortunate this year to be able to do that. Well, Marion Jones back into the game. You can see 19 points and six steals yesterday. She's definitely going to have to be careful not to pick that third foul up, but when she's on the bench, she has such leadership qualities about her because of her track running. She has that international experience. She is the leader on this team. Even though she's just a freshman. Here comes Sampson the other way. Inside for Charlotte Smith, and there's Jones underneath. Won't drop for her, but a foul called. 6-3 lead for Louisiana Tech. Neither team off well shooting. Thomas picked up the foul. Her second. Good ball movement that time, Tim, by the Tar Heels. They were able to kind of slow things down right at the top. They kicked it quick into Smith, and you see the cut by Jones on the baseline and I think North Carolina is going to have to do a little bit more of that as far as cutting rather than just posting up and hitting the, the player. Marion Jones, the 5'10 freshman from Thousand Oaks from Palmdale originally went to school in Thousand Oaks, California. Averaging 14-3 coming into the game. 19 points against Purdue. She hits two to make it 6-5. From the field, the Texters are two of eight. Carolina one of seven. So perhaps some championship game jitters early in this contest. Deborah Williams won't drop for her. Stephanie Lawrence diving on the loose ball. And they'll call the jump ball with the possession arrow going to Louisiana Tech. Lawrence didn't realize that there was not a texter right on her. She could have made a play there. She wanted to sacrifice her body, I think. Yes, I guess. 
The ball goes to the Texters and Kendra Neal into the lineup. For the first time, she is bothered with an ankle, as you heard from our Lee Zeidman. Along with Amy Brown, two injured Lady Texters, and Neal, a valuable player off the bench. They're going to call a holding foul on Kendra Neal, and Marion Jones is the one that stuck out her arm. Just an unfortunate call right there. You know, we saw some calls in yesterday's games, and one of the things, there are six conferences in the women's games that have three officials, and I think that's one thing that the championship games, Tim, are going to have to go to is three officials, especially with a team like North Carolina. They cannot keep up with them, and that's something that they, all the conferences throughout the country are going to have to think about. Well, that's a good point. We have uh, seen some somewhat inconsistent officiating, and a lot of it has simply to do with the speed of the players, the inability of two officials to see everything. This is Deborah Williams. Good penetration by Williams. Rebounded by Marion Jones. Louisiana Tech is getting the shots that they want. And the freshman is off target. Sampson follows. It won't go for her. And it's taken down by LaShawn Brown. LaShawn Brown, number 50, junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Doing the rebounding job for Louisiana Tech. Neal driving into the paint. And she is fouled, I believe, by Jones. Well, yesterday we saw Tanya Sampson get in foul trouble for North Carolina. And this player right there, Tanya Cooper, Coop, came in and, and really sparked the team. But when you lose leaders like a Tanya Sampson, a Charlotte Smith, or Marion Jones in foul trouble, it definitely hurts this Carolina team. Third personal on Marion Jones. Kendra Neal at the line. Obviously a strategy that Leon Barmore is very happy with his players attacking from the point guard position and getting Marion Jones in foul trouble. Neal hits them both, 8-5 the score, and that's a big blow to have Marion Jones, the freshman guard, on the bench this early for Carolina. 14-15 still to go Brown in the first half. This is Crawley. Brown and Crawley are really going at each other. There's three players on these teams, Gwendolyn Gillingham, Sylvia Crawley, and LaShawn Brown all went to Pete Newell's camp, the post player camp down in Colorado Springs, and definitely have helped their game as far as footwork as everything is concerned. And Sylvia Crawley, as a matter of fact, says Pete Newell is one of the most impressive people she has ever met in his life. In her life. Crawley missing her first free throw. The foul was on Amy Brown. Well, the contact appeared to be from LaShawn Brown, but Amy Brown picks up the foul and Crawley makes the second free throw. One of two to make it 8-6, Texter's lead. Louisiana Tech did not shoot well against Alabama despite winning yesterday, only 41% from the field. Well, you heard Sylvia Hatchell too. She says, our defense creates our offense, and they have to play solid defense to get some steals and to get some rebounds and get down there and run. They have not had the chance to run yet, and then you see Leon Barmore with that stare. He's got the greatest stare and also has a black jacket on, does not have his red jacket on that he has won with. Ward all through the tournament, had it on yesterday, so there's a story there to be discovered. Even though there's a jump ball right here and Louisiana Tech does not get the shot up, all, great penetration though by the Lady Texters. Second turnover by the Texters. Carolina ball, 13.48 to go. They trail by two. And there you see the field goal percentages. Uh, Carolina shooting at 10%. They were 53% for the game against Purdue. Both teams struggling early from the field. Kendra Neal, one of the best defensive players on this Louisiana Tech team. Williams missing. Crawley, good job to keep it alive for Lawrence. Tanya Cooper. Chattanooga sophomore, and she has it stolen away by Neal to Johnson. Vicki Johnson, and that won't drop for her. And back quickly to rebound well, Charlotte Smith. Definitely an up and down game when no shots are falling. Tanya Simpson missed the basket, got the backboard, and that's all. Cold shooting here by both teams. I think 
Louisiana Tech has done a super job on their offensive end. They've gotten pretty good shots, Tim. They're being very patient, making North Carolina play defense against them. Deborah Williams and she misses badly. Maybe not a great shot selection right there by Williams as far as the outside. They need to penetrate a little bit more. They may be taking good shots, but they're not making very many. <laughs> Eight six the score. 38 to go in the half. Olivia Hatchell are hollering out instructions to Tanya Sampson. Smith inbounding. I think North Carolina's got to use their height advantage and, and go to their big people. Try and go inside and, and try and create some fouls. Lawrence to Sampson and Sampson hits. Tanya Sampson, the leading scorer on the Carolina team, averaging 17 4 a game. She hit 16 against Purdue along with six rebounds despite playing with that sore groin. Johnson a lot of people forget that she's left handed so she just keeps coming around the corner four points for Vicki Johnson Johnson the 5'9 sophomore from Cushata Louisiana the leading scorer on the lady Texters at 15 three a game we have a timeout on the floor at 11 46 remaining in the half a 10 8 lead for Louisiana Tech Tim Ryan with Ann Myers. We're back here at the Richmond Coliseum. We've been joined by Tennessee coach Pat Summit during our coverage of the final four here. She'll be along at halftime. And right now we'd like to bring her in for her comments on this cold shooting start. A little championship jitters perhaps. <laughs> Pat, you know about these title games. Well, I think a combination of fatigue could be a factor coming off of a very emotional game yesterday. But then I think you have to be a little tense. You're playing for a national championship, but they're getting good shots. And I think that's important. Eventually they'll fall. All right, Pat Summer will be along with Andrea Joyce at halftime. We'll hear more from her. 10 8 the score, Louisiana Tech leading North Carolina. Kendra Neal, Vicki Johnson, shot blocked by Tanya Sampson and a steal by the Tar Heels. Lawrence came up with it. Good hands by Tanya Sampson slapping that ball away, but Louisiana Tech, I think, is sticking to their game plan, just penetrating in that middle. Crawley backing in against Spurlock and hits. We're tied at 10. Three points for Crawley. Jim Neal with a taped up left ankle. Amy Brown playing with a sore ankle, also taped. For the Louisiana Tech Texters. Louisiana Tech really moving well as far as setting picks, constant ball movement. Amy Brown's turnaround, that drops. 10 Lady Texters, four points for Amy Brown, the junior from Livingston, Tennessee. Charlotte Smith down to Stephanie Lawrence. Foul might have been off the ball. Both teams don't have a lot of depth in them. And when the players come in, you've got, yes, a Kendra Neal that comes in for. Louisiana Tech and you've got Cooper coming in for North Carolina but their players don't give you a lot of points they'll give you minutes to rest their starters quite a bit and that's basically the purpose of their substitutions. Here's a break for Spurlock. Her first points of the game. Spurlock had 10 against Alabama 18 boards the big contribution she made. In the semifinal matchup, Sampson <laughs> over to Tanya Cooper and another pushing foul. First on Spurlock and Leon Barmore had the jacket up. Now he's putting it back on. He's got a whole thing with those jackets. When he's mad, boy, it, it comes off. And he's looking at him, look at that official. It's like, how can you call that push? <laughs> Well, you can't get a technical for a glare, for can a you? Glare. I mean, that's pretty safe. Or, or what he thinks. But the message is definitely <laughs> there. Crawley kicks it outside, and a three from Sampson. Texters by a point. Five points for Tanya Sampson. Well, that's why it was nice yesterday when Louisiana Tech won that he did smile. Deborah Williams hits. 
commenced to complain after the game about having to play two days in a row. Well, a lot of coaches feel that way too, Tim, but this is the way it's set up and you got to live with it. Well, somebody, I think and, it was Sylvia Hatchell, said we play uh, three games in a row in the ACC tournament. No right. big deal. That's right. You got to go with what you have. Vicki Johnson as Carolina turns it over. Deborah Williams. Johnson trying to keep it alive. It goes out of bounds and a collision right at the desk on the far side in front of the official scorers table. Looks like both players are all right. LaShawn Brown and Tony Sampson. Well, here you see LaShawn Brown down low and Crawley. We talked about them being in the post player camp, but Crawley puts the ball down on the ground and the guards come up with it. And as a post player, you want to keep that ball high. I know Crawley's trying to get position, but you've got to try and keep it off the ground. Sampson for three. Boy, did she stroke that. She looks so smooth and very confident. Eight points for Sampson. We're tied at 16. Kendra Neal driving the baseline off for Vicki Johnson. Got her own rebound. This is the follow. Spurlock gets Great it outside to Williams. Good job by Raquel Spurlock. Great penetration. Look at Louisiana Tech. Keep coming at him, and Sampson's going to pick up her second personal. But great hustle by both teams going after the basketball. But give Louisiana Tech credit to get a second and third shot at it. North Carolina is really struggling to get a defensive rebound, but give credit to Brown and Spurlock down low, and they kick it out. And then Neal goes down low. Sampson comes over, and she had blocked a shot earlier, but comes over and hits Neal on the arm. and. Two fouls on Tanya Sampson, which again hurts North Carolina. They're going to bring in Jill Sudrath into the game. And Jill Sudrath started last year for them. And Marion Jones came to North Carolina and said, oh, we got a better athlete. But Jill Sudrath has a lot of poise on this team. So she, as far as experience is concerned, because she started last year. 5'5 five, five junior from Granite Falls, North Carolina. Giving Sampson some relief. Four points for Kendra Neal. 18-16, Lady Texters. Sudrath controlling the backcourt now inside to Charlotte Smith, and she's blocked by Spurlock. to be a foul against Spurlock, who doesn't like the call. Second on Spurlock. Well, she's their main post player, so Raquel Spurlock cannot afford to get into foul trouble. But look at Johnson go through the screens. Spurlock sliding through the screens. Louisiana Tech just switches up so well when they have to, and then they slide through defensively. But you see the body contact right there, and Spurlock felt it was a clean block. But still, the defense by Louisiana Tech is so much fun to watch because they work so hard. Smith hits the first. Bring it to within a point. Walker comes in for Louisiana Tech. Nequisha Walker, number 32, a freshman from Athens, Louisiana. She's six foot one. So Leon Barmore. A little extra height in there now. All goes out of bounds with Walker at 6-1 and LaShawn Brown at 6-4. They're two off the bench, but they do give him some more height. 18-17, Lady Texters, 8-11 to go to in the half. Meanwhile, Carrie McKee is in for Carolina. And that's McKee swatting the ball, but it goes to Louisiana Tech. Charlotte Smith really struggling. Williams to Walker, and Walker scores on her first try. Two points for McQuisha Walker. 2017, Lady Texters. We talked about the benches maybe not being so strong, but they're going to have to come through for these teams. And Louisiana Tech is the team that's using their substitutes to the best of their advantage. First personal on Johnson. And they're in the one on one now. 17 foul against Louisiana Tech with 7.43 remaining in the half. Cooper will go to the line. Watch Sudrath on this play here. Some tough defense played against her by Kendra Neal. And then she's just got the roll. <laughs> the shoulder roll. All right, good job. That's been a gymnast for the tumble at some point. Williams rebounding the miss from Cooper. Deborah Williams gets it down low for Vicki Johnson. Can't find room in the paint. Up for Neal. He wants three seconds. 
Three seconds called against the Texters. Timeout on the floor, 7.27 to go on the half, a three-point lead for Louisiana Tech. Lee Zeidman courtside, we stress North Carolina's advantage in speed and size, but it's been the wide bodies of Louisiana Tech that have been giving the Tar Heels trouble inside. Charlotte Smith has been having trouble being effective. Look at the way she's being covered by LaShawn Brown and Raquel Spurlock. The Tar Heels have got to use their speed and try and come up with some physical play. Tim Ryan? All right, Lee, it is Carolina ball with 7.20 remaining in the first half, a three-point Texter's lead. Sudrith calls out the play. She's in there because of Sampson being in foul trouble. Marion Jones, I should say, on the bench. Uh, Good double team by Louisiana Tech. Travel call. Sudrith in for Marion Jones. What happens when the post players are going down, Tim, Louisiana Tech is double teaming. They're leaving the player that is floating out to the outside, and all of a sudden they'll double down low because that post player is getting the ball. There you see the double team, and somebody's open for North Carolina. That ball's got to be kicked out right away or try and find an opening. Kendra Neal. Deborah Williams. Rebounded by Charlotte Smith. Smith missing, Crawley knocked it right into the hands of Vicki Johnson. They had a three on two break but really couldn't set it up because Crawley was in the middle and Lord, or Smith really didn't have the angle on that shot. She's really frustrated too, she's forcing a lot of shots. Williams fouled before she got the shot away. It'll be Sudrath picking up the foul for Carolina. Remember, Marion Jones, the brilliant the freshman guard, still on the bench in foul trouble for the Tar Heels. Now they're sending in. There's uh, Marion Jones, Lori Gear. Coming into the game wearing number 33 today. That's why I hesitated. When they wear their blue jersey, she wears number 32. And today, in white, she wears 33. When asked why that is, it was a simple answer. They don't have 32 in white or 33 in blue, one or the other. Well, you saw the championships that Louisiana Tech has won and, and how many times they've been there. Leanne Barmore has been with the Louisiana Tech program since 78. And they've just done a fabulous job. They also won the AIAW back in 81 where they were undefeated 34-0. Walker backs it. Lakeisha Walker. Freshman from Athens, Louisiana, four points. 22-17, a five-point lead now. That has the Texters fans in sold-out Richmond Coliseum on their feet, but Sampson brings the Tar Heel fans alive. A three-pointer for 11 for her and a 22-20 game. Johnson, her miss, but Williams is there, she misses. And that's where North Carolina is getting really hurt. And Lawrence hustles the ball down, Tim, but two chances at this shot for the basket for Louisiana Tech. They're really hustling after the offensive board. There's your feeding inside to Crawley, and she takes a push. Sylvia Crawley gets fouled on that. North Carolina really doesn't have anybody down low to go for the offensive boards, and that's the part that is hurting them in this game right now is their rebounding. 17 fouls each. There's Sylvia Crawley's dad, James Crawley. Four points for Sylvia, who had 16 against Purdue in yesterday's semifinal game. She's got four and a board so far today. Chance to tie it up again. And she does. Tied at 22 with 5.07 to go in the first half. Carolina Blue being waved in their section. And Crowley with a block on Kendra Neal. Bit of a physical mismatch there. Lady Texters are setting some high posts, and then the guards are just going down to the baseline, and they're trying to get that ball down low. Even though the ball is blocked, it's a shot that Louisiana Tech wants. Deborah Williams hits. Four points for Williams. Lori 
gear from Lennoxville, Quebec, a freshman at 5'10". Well, you can definitely tell Lori Gear is not very good at handling the ball with her left hand. The pass goes through the hands of Sylvia Crawley. She loses control, and Louisiana Tech hustling after it. Jump ball called, and the possession out of the Texters. You talked about the height of the post players for North Carolina. They've got to try and keep that ball up. Otherwise, once they bring it down, you're going to bring it right into the defense. Louisiana Tech now shooting at 32%. Carolina at 30. Carolina yesterday shot 53% against Purdue. Both teams at least have picked it up from the early going when this game started with Cole shooting from the field. Great pass inside. Brown misses the shot, but Kendra Neal really makes a nice pump fake, gets the tall players up in the air for North Carolina and dishes it off. And Brown misses the easy shot. Kendra Neal, the sophomore from Pelican, Louisiana. Louisiana Tech time and again is able to penetrate into the lane. Nice pass right there and Brown just can't get the shot under control. And we talked yesterday that when she was nine years old, she had her fingers cut off on a lawnmower. And she is right handed. Stephanie Lawrence outside. Charlotte Smith inside to Crawley. Crawley's turnaround will go. Tied again at 24. Seven points for Crawley. So Marion Jones on the bench for Carolina. Pam Thomas on the bench for the Texters. But Kendra Neal particularly has done a good job in relief. Williams missing. Carolina rebounding. Tanya Sampson inside in the pass mishandled by Crawley. Crawley claiming she was pushed from behind. Deborah Williams back the other way. Kendra Neal underneath Lori Gear and foul. Well, defensively, North Carolina was playing good defense, and as soon as they leave their feet, they're going to get the foul because Louisiana Taker is making nice pump fakes. But look at the little hip hop by Tanya Sampson. She goes up. Oh, nice fake right there, and makes a great pass inside. And Sylvia Crawley is definitely having trouble handling the ball because that's a nice play by Tanya Sampson. Neal at the line. Dexter's up by one. Five points for Kendra Neal. And Thomas on the bench. And she is five of five from the free throw line. Oh, I'm jinxed her. <laughs> Way to go. Aquisha Walker. Three point Louisiana Tech lead. 2.55 to go first half. Tanya Sampson. Sampson really working hard trying to make something happen, but Louisiana Tech is a team that really go, is going into the middle and attacking. Vicki Johnson, the follow by Walker. Walker. Walker, the freshman. Eight points from Aquisha Walker. Crawley's turn around, takes a push from LaShawn Brown. Well, Crawley's getting the ball in the paint, but what is happening, too, once she gets the ball, everything is cleared out, and North Carolina is not able to go in there to get an offensive rebound. So, trying to take a breather. It, it's getting very physical out there, and talk to Sylvia Crawley. This is the business she wants to get into. 6'5", and she's going to take our jobs. <laughs> And there's Marie Crawley, Sylvia's mom. We saw her dad earlier. Eight points now for Crawley. The first foul on LaShawn Brown, setting up those two free throws. The lead cut to three. Louisiana Tech on top. Back in Richmond, I'm Andrea Joyce. Coming up on the Pennzoil at the half, Tennessee head coach Pat Summit will join us. We'll head down Charlotte for a preview of tomorrow night's men's championship game and an inspirational story from Immaculata College. It's all coming up on the Pennzoil at the half. Now back to Tim Ryan. Thank you, Andrea. We have 2.25 to go until we'll be hearing from Andrea and Pat Summit at halftime. 29-26 and Louisiana Tech, we felt, 
was uh, facing a bigger faster opponent in Carolina today uh, not writing their chances off but here they are now three points up on Carolina despite those handicaps Marion Jones on the bench in foul trouble with three for Carolina Pam Thomas has been sitting out much of the half with two fouls for Louisiana Tech and Sampson hits great to draw them to within one great hustle by Tanya Sampson getting down court and pass that ball to Stephanie Lawrence and looking for each other 13 I, points for Sampson. I really see Louisiana Tech though, Tim. They're just controlling the tempo of this game. They are penetrating against this offense. In North Carolina, I wouldn't be surprised coming out in the second half, goes to a zone to try and stop that penetration. There's Neal penetrating, and uh, that stat backs up what you just described. Uh, 18 points to eight in the paint for Louisiana Tech against uh, the, their taller opponents, at least on the starters. But look at the efforts they've had from Aquisha Walker, the 6'1 freshman who's come in. LaShawn Brown, the 6'4 junior has come in. That's really made a difference for them inside. They're really playing good defense, and as Lee told us earlier, they're being very physical against Charlotte Smith and Sylvia Crawling. They're having a tough time, so the other players are going to have to step up. Obviously, Tanya Sampson has. Well, near the conclusion of today's game, Ann and I will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 135 to go in the half. Two-point lead for the Texters. This is Tanya Sampson. Has it knocked away? Recovered by Charlotte Smith. And again the turnover. Good job by LaShawn Brown. Tough angle to get that ball in there because it came from the top. And LaShawn Brown did a good job just stepping up and putting her hand in there. Deborah Williams missing the three. Rebound is LaShawn Brown. And Sampson down and slow to get up. LaShawn Brown. She and McQuisha Walker have been a force here for the Texters in this first half. And Sampson. She nailed her elbow, I think. It doesn't help, though, that when you pound the ball, because your hand isn't going to feel any better. Already troubled with a sore groin. Now it's Here you see Brown going up and Sampson going down. It's her wrist. It's yep. her wrist. And as a matter of fact, she hurt her wrist in spring break, and she, did, she was riding her dirt bike. She just had to. Kawasaki 250 likes to ride motorbikes and uh, she fell, but she knows how to fall now. Sylvia Hatchell's not too thrilled about her riding those no. bikes. But she's been riding them since she was six years old. Her brother's taught her and uh, she, wants, she thinks maybe down the road she might like to be a stunt woman. Final minute of this first half, Deborah Williams turn around off the mark. And Smith another rebound. She's been the best on the boards for Carolina. Well, they've got to get her involved in the offense. She only has one point at the free throw line. Ten rebounds for Charlotte Smith. And that's Sampson. She takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Sampson, no matter what happens, she just seems to shrug off the injuries. She got knocked around yesterday and turned in an outstanding effort against Purdue with 16 points and six rebounds. 32 to 30, a two-point lead, and so the Texters will use up the rest of this clock and take the final shot. Neal trying to penetrate, stolen by Sampson. And Sampson will tie it at the buzzer. Tim Ryan with Ann Myers back here at halftime. They're having to repair one of the nets, as you can see, and that job uh, will take a couple of minutes, but I guess uh, Ann Myers reflecting on this first half. Uh, Lady Texters, uh, we said at the outset they were going to struggle against a faster, uh, taller North Carolina team, and they would somehow have to compensate to overcome that. As it turned out with the foul trouble to Marion Jones and uh, and even Samson with a couple sitting down for a few minutes early in the half, they, uh, they've they done a great job inside with a couple of unexpected names, uh, LaShawn Brown and McQuisha Walker. LaShawn Brown has done a super job on Charlotte Smith defensively. I think she only has one point. Here you'll see Brown against Sylvia Crawley, but whether she's on, on Crawley or Charlotte Smith, she's doing a good job as far as having difficult time getting the ball. You see Crawley's working and working, and Brown is very, very strong. She just steps right into the passing lane. And Crawley's struggling from the, um, from the floor, and also uh, 
Charlotte Smith with only one point. But the thing is that I, I, it impresses me with Louisiana Tech is their defense that but also they have eight people that have scored they have really distributed they're not shooting the ball well but eight people have scored and plus McQuisha Walker a freshman coming in really a big surprise four or five from the field getting eight points from her certainly a bonus although she was a contributor during the regular season but we hadn't seen her at all in yesterday's semifinal game uh, 20 significant degree but look at the problems they've had from their starting guards four of 23 you can see that that is really a difficult situation obviously as, as far as any kind of percentage for the Louisiana Tech guards but the fact though that they are taking good shots they're getting the shots that they want they're not falling right now but I think if they continue to take those shots they're going to keep this lead and no, right. I, I won't be surprised also if North Carolina comes out in a 2-3 zone which Sylvia Hatchell has used for the last three games and that has really made a difference in her defense. Well, let's uh, get a report now from Lee Zeidman while I continue the repairs here, Lee. Well, Tim, we saw just how important Marion Jones is to that North Carolina offense. Without Jones in running the floor show, the Tar Heels were completely out of sync. Sylvia Hatchell was very concerned about the, the disorientation that her team showed on the floor, but is hopeful that with Jones back in now, despite the three fouls to start the second half, they'll be able to get together offensively. Defensively, Hatchell's very concerned about how much penetration those guards have been able to get for Louisiana Tech. The fact that they have not been shooting well has been a help, but the Tar Heels need to close down inside and start getting their floor show in order. Tim? All right, Lee. A good description of that. And uh, I, what they need here is a seamstress, I think. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little concerned about what's going on in the net repair here. Uh, there's a good effort being put forward here, uh, but they ought to figure out a way to just simply replace the whole thing quickly, right? Well, you'd think they would. Well, meanwhile, the bands get a little extra tuning in here as uh, we await the start of the second half. We're tied at 32. Louisiana Tech, of course, back in 1988, won this championship. North Carolina has never been in the Final Four in women's basketball. The Texters know a little bit about winning this championship. And there was Leon Barmore. This was really a great team. They went 32 and 2 that year. They beat Auburn by two points, 56 to 54. But what a fabulous year for Leon Barmore. He said that this was one of the those teams he was most proud of and now coming back to this year 94 he thinks this team is just as special because they did not start out as good and they've really pulled together. No doubt about that. I think the victory over Alabama was very satisfying yesterday a team that had beaten them by 22 points in December. But he said this is a completely different team. I think I think that Alabama would agree uh, on that score. As for Carolina of course uh, only just two or three years ago there they were mired at the bottom of the ACC and here they are with their chance to win the national championship. As we see these uh, stats, the turnover department has been a problem for Carolina, and I guess part of that, you'd have to say, is the fact that uh, freshman guard Marion Jones has been on the bench in foul problems. I think ball control is a big key because even though Marion Jones is on the bench, he still is not a great, great ball handler. And I think five turnovers in the first half for Louisiana Tech is a big plus. The lowest they've had this year was against SMU with seven turnovers, but they are taking care of the basketball. Extra special because I think of yesterday's game with all the steals that Marion Jones Jones had and, and her teammates she had six and realize how quick they are and how they can step into the passing lane. Well they're just going to have to get her back in as soon as they can. The young freshman is uh, obviously a huge factor despite the fact that she's in her first year. And the biggest thing is Marion Jones comes back into the game Tim she's got to say she's got to play position defense rather than reaching and trying to come up with a spectacular play. She can't go for a block. She cannot let these guards penetrate because I can see the Louisiana Tech players going right at her to pick up those other fouls. Well here uh, during this week part of the festivities surrounding the final four the announcement of the Kodak All-America team and uh, while well, our seamstress continues to stitch we'll show you that Tanya Sampson on that uh, squad she is a uh out here with the North Carolina Tar Heels this afternoon in this championship game. Nisa Johnson, a valiant effort. We saw her yesterday for Alabama playing hurt. Cut herself at halftime and continued to play hard the rest of the way. Rebecca Lobo at the top of that list. Uh, an outstanding player for Connecticut. And Nikki McRae. We had a chance to see her earlier in the season. Pat Summon must be very proud of her. Well, she felt Nick McRae was one of her best players that she's ever coached. I mean, her defense and just what she adds to the team, her innocence and her leadership. And she really had a spectacular year. And then you had you had Nisi Johnson, as you said, but Natalie Williams from UCLA, who was a Pac-10 player of the year. And Lisa Leslie, also from the Pac-10 
from SC who was the player of the year this year. Uh, I might have guessed you were going to get the Pac-10 in there somehow, an uh, old UCLA Bruin. <laughs> this is not an old UCLA Bruin. This is Rick Barry, and uh, he's a great fan of women's basketball. It's not unusual to run into him at one of these games, and he's well, here with his brand new baby boy uh, and, and wife and, Lynn. And Lynn Barry, who. Uh, works for USA Basketball in their new son Canyon. He's 11 weeks old and uh, Rick just had his 50th birthday last week. So uh, he's very proud Papa. Well they've done the job on the net. We're ready to play ball here. The second half 20 minutes away from determining another national champion barring overtime. It'll be the North Carolina or Louisiana Tech and Thomas back starting at guard, her first shot misses, and a foul called right away as Smith goes to the floor. This is just really a great play by Louisiana Tech. They've been running it every time in the first half. You've got the point guard, they come off the high post, and it just leaves the right side wide open, and they're going one-on-one -on -one in the situation where North Carolina has got to be a little bit more aggressive. Andrew Williams works away into the paint, comes up short off the front rim. And another rebound by Sharna Smith. And Smith takes it all away. Only three points for Charlotte Smith, but she's been great on the boards through the first half. Leon Barmore has felt all season long that it's important for his team to get out to a fast start in the second half. Deborah Williams, two for 14 from the floor in the first half. Dexters would like her to get going. Amy Brown missing. And a break for Marion Jones. Sample of the spinner speed, she missed the layup. She never really had the angle, but boy, she just split three players very quickly, and Leon Barmore cannot believe that Deborah Williams turned that ball over and let the defensive player go. So we have a timeout, 34-32 Carolina by two. Marion Jones is just gonna come out and you see the defense. Deborah Jones never comes over to stop Jones, or Deborah Williams never comes over to stop Jones coming through, and that's what Liam Barmore is very upset about. That's why he called the timeout. Even though Jones misses the layup, he will not tolerate lapses in defense, and Deborah Williams is, is sitting down on the bench. He's very upset for not stopping Marion Jones. Well, he was so upset, he left the bench, went to the floor, and literally pushed Charlotte Smith of Carolina out of the way in order to get into the face of Deborah Williams. So Deborah's feeling the coach's wrath at the moment. She has been replaced on the floor by Joletta Riser, a senior from Jenna, Louisiana. Obviously, that was a key big block right there by Riser in the game. Joletta Riser, who came in, but you've got to give credit to North Carolina stepping into the passing lane. We mentioned that Louisiana Tech only had five turnovers in that first half. They've already got two starting out in the second half. Charlotte Smith. Missing off the glass, but followed by Sampson. Sampson banged her head after she fell to the floor. She is battered and bruised. 19 points. Smith rebounding. Thirty-six, thirty-two. Carolina lead. Great hustle by Sampson. The ball goes out of bounds, but give her credit for following her shot. Johnson will inbound it. Louisiana Tech really needs to concentrate, just like they did in the first half. Keep penetrating and take care of the basketball. Williams driving, but she had a short rest over there after Leon Barmore gave her what for? Six points for Deborah Williams. 36 34. Tough call right there. Pam Thomas picking up her third personal. You see Marion Jones penetrating. And Jones trying to, or Thomas trying to get position. Now each of the two point guards. With three fouls. Thomas for Louisiana Tech and Jones for North Carolina. Charlotte Smith. Well, she's pushed. And we saw in that game yesterday with Purdue that Charlotte Smith came out and just really took control, Tim. She scored like four or five baskets in a row for North Carolina, and she's come out in the second half and she wants the basketball. 
third on Amy Brown, so she goes out. Lucretia Walker, who did so well in the first half in relief, comes back into the game. Number 32, the freshman. One of the reasons that Lucretia Walker not only is getting playing time because of what she's done in the first half, but also the fact that Amy Brown is limping a little bit with that ankle, and that's giving her a few more minutes. Charlotte Smith now with five points. Four point Carolina lead. Chapel Hill against Ruston. The matchup here today, Ruston, Louisiana. The home of the Lady Texters, Louisiana Tech. Deborah Williams driving the paint. Eight points for Williams. Yeah, I think Leon Barmore has played a very good psychological game with everybody. He said, oh, we got players hurt, can't play back to back. We're not as quick, we're not as tall. So he's thinking, hey, everybody thinks this team is gonna lose, but they're going right at North Carolina. Raleigh's turn around, 11 points for her and a four point Carolina lead again. Thomas brings it up, calling the play en route. <laughs> Deborah Williams is wide open. North Carolina not switching very well on their defense. Thomas for three. Miscommunication defensively for the Tar Heels. Five points for Thomas. She had 21 against Alabama. Set up much of the first half with two fouls, now has three. Spurlock. I think Jones is really thinking too. She wants to, she's trying really hard to do something, but sitting on that bench for so long in that first half. Deborah Williams starts the drive. First on Crawley. Sylvia Crawley had the right idea to try and cut off the baseline, just didn't get over there quick enough. You see Johnson passing the ball up high, and North Carolina just really got lost on defense on this possession. And you can't forget about Pam Thomas because she can hit the three pointer. Jump ball called. Possession arrow is Carolina's. 15.50 to go in the second half. Charlotte Smith wears number 23, the same number her mother wore in high school. And her mother is the sister of David Thompson, who won the championship in 1974 in North Carolina State. Charlotte Smith. 23 goes up for two. 42 to 39, that's seven points for Charlotte Smith. Driving baseline into traffic, throws it up and fouling is called. The basket will not count. That was great defense right there by North Carolina. They had three players switch off and almost knew exactly where Deborah Williams was going, but Williams made great moves penetrating. But you see the picks and she comes right off it. Sylvia Crowley's ready for it. She's going to go baseline. Look at her roll, cut it off, and then all of a sudden Lawrence is right there to pick her up and just trips, and that's where the travel is called. But otherwise, it's a great move on both teams' part. Stephanie Lawrence with Crowley in and out. Smith trying to keep it inbound. Kendra Neal in the backcourt now for Louisiana Tech. Vicki Johnson. And LaShawn Brown and Marion Jones doing some pushing and shoving, and the foul will be called against Louisiana Brown, and that's her fourth. So that's not the kind of foul Leon Barmore would like her to take. Let's see it here. Well, Brown is trying to set the pick. She's there, and she just comes off with her arms. I, she looked pretty stationary to me. Nice pick. <laughs> Charlotte Smith. Nine points for Smith. 
That's her mom. Both Smith and Crawley have their families here in this championship game. Well, I think all the Carolina players have their families here. Travel call by Spurlock. 44 to 39. Carolina lead 13 27 to go in the second half. The Lady Texans have lost a little bit of control as far as the tempo of this game. Things, even though they were missing shots in the first half, they weren't turning the ball over. They're turning the ball over, and North Carolina now, Tim, is being a lot more aggressive offensively with their big players, and Smith is getting the ball. There's Smith again going to the glass. And fouled on the way. That's the third on Spurlock, Raquel Spurlock. Sherlock number three, uh, Pat Summit. Uh, you heard from at halftime with Andrea Joyce and uh, Pat. What's your uh, what's your view here of Carolina's change in this second half? Well, obviously they are they're executing much better on the offensive end. I think they're playing more aggressive defensively. It just seems to be more of, of their game and how they want to play it. A little more like we expected at the uh, the outset of this game. And of course, I guess that. Early foul trouble by Marion Jones kind of changed things for them. But here in the second half, this is the Carolina team we expected. 13 13 to go, 45 39. 10 points now for Charlotte Smith. Vicki Johnson. That was the fact that Sampson tried to go for the steal, and in that zone, it just opened up the middle, which left Johnson wide open going inside. Six points for Johnson. One of the reasons Smith is getting a little bit more a great block right there by Spurlock, but I was going to say Smith is getting more involved in the offense because Crawley has stepped out to the top of the key, and it's opened up the middle a little bit more for Charlotte Smith. Deborah Williams is pushed by Lawrence. First on Stephanie Lawrence. I tell you, North Carolina has a lot, had a lot of trouble in this game, Tim, as far as cutting that baseline off for the Lady Texters and give credit to the guards for Louisiana Tech to continually take that. Tanya Cooper has come in for Sampson. Contributed seven rebounds in the win yesterday. She's a sophomore from Chattanooga. Saw some time in the first half. North Carolina on their defense doing a better job switching up. Pam Thomas. Rebound Smith. A foul call. If they call that on Pam Thomas, it'll be her fourth. 15 rebounds yep. for Smith. They're going to call that on Vicki Johnson. That's number two on Johnson. Tech pressing. Cooper gets it up. Lawrence for Smith. And to Crawley. Crawley's turn around. And go. Rebounded by Spurlock. Tech needs this continued fine play by Spurlock. The last two possessions. He's done the job underneath. Charlotte Smith taking over. Going to those boards. They need a big effort from Spurlock. Williams turn around in and out. And that's Smith a again the rebound. And that's a tough shot. It looks like it's going to go in, but I think that's what the Tar Heels have to do is make Louisiana Tech shoot over them. Oh, LaShawn Brown looks like she steps in really good on defense in that passing lane, and it's a tough angle for Charlotte Smith to get it into Crawley. Brown looks like she does a good job defensively, but she gets called for the foul. And that's number five on LaShawn Brown. Brown got more time in the first half than she normally would. And she's done a very good job here today, but she has fouled out with two points and two rebounds. Don't be deceived by the numbers. She contributed very strongly for Louisiana Tech's Lady Texters, the junior from Cleveland, Ohio. And they'll miss her 6'4 height. Not only her height, but just how active she is defensively and how she's been banging Crawley down low. Sampson back into the game for Carolina. Crawley at the line with 11 points makes it 12. Amy Brown back in for Louisiana 
Tech. Dolly misses the second. Vicki Johnson pulls up. Missed the jumper, she was clear. Marion Jones intended for Sampson. Deborah Williams got a hand on it. It'll be Carolina ball. And we have a timeout with 11.16 to go, a five-point Carolina lead. This is the championship game. The thing that I've seen, you know, throughout the years is um, the mentality of the players. Um, I can remember my freshman year, you know, we would play teams, we say, oh, I hope I win, you know, I hope we win. And now it's, I know we're going to win. You know, just the confidence le level and the mentality of the girls have changed over the years, and I've seen that transition happen. Well, Sylvia Crawley uh, is one of those who frequently says, when we win, and uh, she is one of two seniors in the starting lineup, two seniors that make the only two seniors on the entire roster, joined by Tanya Sampson, and they would love to finish their careers with a national championship. 12 points for Smith, as she's starting to come on in the second half for Carolina, 48 to 41. Our heels lead. Neither team shooting the ball well, Tim, as far as from the floor. 32% for Louisiana Tech, 36% for North Carolina. And Louisiana Tech is doing the defensive job that they normally do. They hold opponents to 36%, but they're just not shooting the ball well. Crowley comes away with it. Sampson. Hope from behind and the steal, but it goes out of bounds off the hand of Kendra Neal as Thomas had created the turnover, but it goes back to Carolina. Lawrence will inbound it. Alicia Walker has come in for Amy Brown. For Louisiana Tech. Shot hit the side of the backboard. Spurlock rebounding. And Thomas to Vicki Johnson. Johnson driving baseline and hits from a sharp angle. 48 to 43, eight points for Johnson. The one thing I like about Louisiana Tech is offensively, Tim, they're still being aggressive. They're not shooting the ball well, but they're getting good shots, and they're still putting up the shots that they had in the first half. Sampson off the front iron. Vicki Johnson puts the brakes on, and Lawrence breaks it up. Good defense by Sampson. She stopped the ball early before it hit down low. And there's a bad pass by Marion Jones. Neal back the other way. Neal trying to find a hole and goes out of bounds. This is what you like to see a player do is stop the ball up by right exactly where Sampson is. You don't want to get them down low at the free throw line because then they can create something and make and you're in shooting range. So you've got to stop the ball early. Thomas watched by Jones. This was the anticipated matchup that both have had foul problems. And there's a foul call there. That's a great matchup right there with Vicki Johnson, 5'9, 150, and Tanya Sampson also 5'9. But I tell you, both players very, very strong inside. And Sampson getting called for over the back. Third foul on Sampson. Thomas watched by Jones. The two quicksters on the court. Thomas pulls up, missed everything. Crawley had the air ball, but a jump ball is called. Good job by Walker. Well, Crawley was there to get the rebound again. She brings it down, and, and Walker has just done a fabulous job in this championship game for Louisiana Tech. Neal facing down the inbounds pass. Kendra Neal trying to penetrate, kicks it out for Johnson. Johnson into the paint. She lost it as Crawley got a hand on it. Costly turnover. 48-43, five-point lead. They get it right back. Kendra Neal. Three on two break. Walker. And the freshman hits again. Three-point lead, Carolina. Ten points for McCreecher Walker. And North Carolina has to be a little smarter setting up in their half-court game. Cooper just does not make a good pass to Crawley because the defense is all over. Jones into the corner for Sampson. 
Samson tries a three. It rebounds directly to Johnson, and Vicki Johnson now slowing it up. I think North Carolina has really gone away from what they started out in the second half. They started getting the ball to Charlotte Smith. She has not touched the ball probably in about the last two minutes, Tim. And also, they're not being very patient on the offense. They're not getting the ball inside. They're looking to take the outside shot. Johnson hands it. 47, 10 points for Vicki Johnson, the sophomore from Cushada, Louisiana. You know, this North Carolina team averages 85 points a game. And they've only got 48. The lowest they've scored is 63 in a win over Old Dominion. Tanya Sampson poked away by Walker, followed by Jones. Ball loose and a foul call. It's on Crowley, her second. the floor with 7.52 to play. 48-47 Carolina. With the lead down to one, Sylvia Hatchell preaching patience and poise to her Tar Heels, encouraging them to go back to what worked for them, to go back inside to Charlotte Smith, get away from perimeter shots that have turned into tech fast breaks. Let's go back to Tim Ryan. Well, Lee, interestingly enough on that point, uh, Tech has now scored 28 points from the paint. North Carolina only 20 so uh, while they were effective with it early in the second half with Charlotte Smith it has fallen off some in the last few minutes 752 to go 48 47 a one point game both teams are not shooting uh, near their normal percentage and thus the low score 737 to go Spurlock won't drop for her and Charlotte Smith another rebound. It's almost like slow motion right there. Another miss at the other end and Thomas brings it back. Thomas goes all the way. Pam Thomas the senior from Shreveport seven points. And a one point lead for the Texters. The North Carolina really having trouble as far as stopping the perimeter guards on their penetration letting them go to their strength with their right hand there Marion Jones little push off with Kendra Neal and Neal getting called for the foul but when you've got a player that is strictly right handed and even though they're good with their left hand which Cam Thomas is you force them to go to their weak side one and one now with Carolina's Jones at the line 17 foul on Tech Carolina has four. Jones misses. Free throws are a killer for North Carolina. They shot 53% against Purdue yesterday. And they're a team that shoots 72%. So they have struggled from the free throw line in yesterday's game and today's game. Jones normally a 75% shooter from the free throw line. Johnson out for Thomas. Thomas and Neal in the backcourt. Ricky Johnson in the corner feeding Spurlock. Spurlock's turn around missed everything and it comes down on the hands of Lawrence. Good transition defense by Louisiana Tech. And this is the point in the game too. We, they played yesterday and so this is where the fatigue factor might take over a little bit as far as legs and shots being a little short. Side to Crawley. Won't go for her. Rebounded by Walker. Cam Thomas trying the baseline. Kicks it out to Neal. Kendra Neal to Spurlock. And travel call against Spurlock moving that pivot foot. She just slipped a little bit on a wet spot. One point Tech lead. 14 turnovers now for Louisiana Tech. Look at how quick Thomas is getting there, and Lawrence cuts her off, but nice pass outside. But again, Pam Thomas is a player that can use her right hand and left hand very, very well. Crawley trying to get it to Smith. It's poked away by Lucretia Walker, and it pays off at the other end. Great shot by Pam Thomas. It's probably the shot you want her to take. She comes through. Nine for her and a three-point lead for the Texters.
Tanya Sampson backing Johnson into the paint, and she misses badly. Just one on one by Tanya Sampson that time, not getting anybody else involved. Pam Thomas recovers the pass intended for Walker that came right back to her, and there's Thomas. The senior coming alive, 11 points for her. She had 21 against Alabama yesterday. That gets a timeout from Sylvia Hatchell. 53 to 48 with 503 to go. The Texters leading the Tar Heels. Ladies and gentlemen, We're back at the Richmond Coliseum where Pam, Pam Thomas has turned it on here. 11 points now for the Texters. And Pat Summit, who has been with us throughout the final four coverage here in Richmond, remembers her well. Pat, uh, tell us about Pam Thomas and what she's brought to the second half. Well, I think she's just really brought Tex offensive attack alive. I think she's given them the attitude and she's attacked the basket with, with great penetration, both in a half court and a full court situation. You beat this team back in December. She didn't play that well in that game, but of course she played awfully well in her victory over in the tournament. Well, she had a tremendous game against us as she's having a great second half here and I think she has exceptional quickness to create opportunities for herself as well as her team. All right, thank you, Pat. 4.35 to go, a five-point margin. I think people really have to look at Louisiana Tech, too, as the giant killers because Tennessee was ranked number one all season long, and Penn State stuck in there a little bit, but only one loss for Tennessee, and they beat Tennessee, then come back and beat USC, and then Alabama. I think a lot of people really didn't know whether this team was that good early on. Travel call against Walker after the turnover by Carolina. They're 19th in the game. That certainly contributed to their deficit at the moment. And that other person you saw sitting up there with Pat Summit was Paul Vanderveer, the Stanford coach. Who had a great year. North Carolina a little frustrated right now. 20 turnovers. Two in a row, two consecutive possessions. And they're shooting one of 15 from the field in that stretch. 53 to 48. Thomas slowing it down. 4.03 to go. Teams were tied at the half. Is that zone by North Carolina. It has stopped the penetration in the middle, but not from the baseline. Pam Thomas won't go this time. Probably kept it alive. Smith came down with it. Another rebound for Smith. Sampson bounce pass for Jones. Outside for Charlotte Smith. She tries a three. It comes right back to Smith. Good follow, but it goes around the rim. She got her own rebound and gets that one. 14 points for Charlotte Smith. Boy, is that a big bucket for the Tar Heels to keep things alive. If they don't score, you got Louisiana Tech coming down and really a four-point swing if, if they don't come down with it because they have just been struggling, and it seems almost like that there is a cap on that basket for the Tar Heels, so that's a big bucket for them. 21 rebounds for Charlotte Smith. A career high. Amy Brown comes in for Walker. Laquisha Walker has contributed in a tremendous fashion, the freshman for Louisiana Tech. Three-point lead for the Texters. A 13th NCAA appearance. Two-time champions in 82 and 88. Last appearance in 1990, they lost to Vanderbilt in the Midwest Finals. And that 21 rebounds for Charlotte Smith is a championship game record. 53 to 51, the crowd alive. 317 to play for the national championship. North Carolina doesn't want to extend themselves too far out. Williams missing, Smith rebounding, 22. Charlotte Smith. Sampson rebounds. Smith rebounds and scores. 23 rebounds. And a big rebound by Tanya Sampson to keep things alive. We're tied at 53 with 2.36 to play. A 
Well, a look at the champs the last five years. Cheryl Swoops leading Texas Tech a year ago. Pat Summit with two victories in there, 91 and 89 for Tennessee. And Louisiana Tech and Carolina are all knotted up with 2.53 to go in pursuit of one of those championships of their own. 25 victories in a row for LA Tech coming into this game. 13 in a row for the Tar Heels. Johnson missing. Battling to get control of the rebound and does. It's good hustle by Louisiana Tech. Vicki Johnson being very aggressive to get that basketball. Sampson called for the foul. Fifth team foul, her fourth personal. Thomas gets control in the backcourt. She has really given a lift to the Texters here in the second half. Driving this Kendra Neal. Neal is blocked by Crawley, and Sampson comes away with it for the Tar Heels. Under two minutes we go. Marion Jones, the freshman. Charlotte Smith, Sampson. Lawrence and Crawley, the starting five for the Tar Heels on the floor, poked away by Spurlock, grabbed by Thomas. Thomas in the paint. You've got to stop the ball. 13 points for Pam Thomas. 21 against Alabama yesterday. Slow starting today, but hot in the second half. North Carolina cannot afford to play cautious. Simpson. Tied at 55, 21 points for Sampson, the scoring leader of the Tar Heel team. Approaching a minute, tied at 55. North Carolina staying in that matchup zone. Thomas Pullock is blocked by Jones, Vicky Johnson. 12 points for Johnson. Two point tech lead, under a minute. Jones for Crawley's turnaround, yes. 14 points, Sylvia Crawley. Big play for North Carolina defensively to try and get the lead. They can come up without a shot for Louisiana Tech. They're going to call a timeout. 26.6 seconds remaining. Tied at 57. The national championship at stake when we return. Now this is the picture at the moment with 26.6 seconds to go. The field goal percentages show both teams have had a tough day shooting from the field. That doesn't matter at all right now. 57 to 57 with 26.6 remaining. No timeouts for the Texters, two for the Tar Heels. Possession arrow in favor of North Carolina. Now it is Texter ball. What do you expect from Leon Barmore here, Ann Meyer? There's 14 seconds left on the shot clock, 26.6 in the game. I would expect the, when the game is on the line, he wants the ball in Pam Thomas's hands. But because the way this game has gone, anybody can score. And I think he's going to feel a lot of confidence whether Neal goes for it, or whether Johnson, whether it be Walker, Spurlock. But obviously, the ball is going to be in Pam Thomas's hand, the senior that has controlled the tempo and, and brought this team back. But Vicki Johnson has been scoring, too. Johnson will inbound. Thomas has it. Down to 10 on the shot clock. They want to clear it out for. Two defenders come to Thomas. She lets it fly and hits. 15 points for Thomas. 10 seconds left to play. They're not going to call a timeout. Tanya Sampson. They waited too long. Jump ball with .7 left. Sylvia Hatch are calling timeout. I thought they should have brought it up quickly to call a timeout and set up a play. But she let the team go. But they took too much time off of the clock, getting it down. Carolina has the arrow. 0.7 left to play. Well, I tell you, give credit to Pam Thomas. Talk about a gutsy player. As Pat said, she has had the attitude in the second half. Lots of confidence, brought this team back, and hit a clutch shot. She had two defenders on her. Remember, she's only 5'3". 
So she has to really time that kind of a jump shot. I think North Carolina was so stunned, Tim, that they brought the ball up so slow, didn't know whether to call a timeout or not. Didn't really have a play. Sampson goes one on one. Ten seconds left. They need to get a shot off a little sooner because it, under ten seconds they got the shot off. Here now they're down to point seven. But watch Pam Thomas. It's a, Lawrence comes out. They double team. She just sets herself out. Then Jones drops off, and it's clutch all the way. Nothing but net. But look at it. Look at how slow they bring the ball out. They've got to get it out quickly. Bring it up court if you're going to call a timeout. And there's a scramble. Too much time off the clock for North Carolina to try and set something up that's going to really be a good shot for them. Marion Jones, the freshman, got most of the ball, but the jump ball called. There's the situation. Seven tenths remains. It will be Carolina ball with a possession arrow. Two point Louisiana Tech lead. In pursuit of their third national championship. Carolina in their first ever Final Four. Well, the out of bounds play that we've seen all season long with North Carolina is at 6 5, Sylvia Crawley. Obviously, the shot's got to go up very, very quickly. It's almost a touch pass. And if they can get it with the lob inside to Crawley, she's just got to basically tip it up there like a volleyball. There's the unity on that Carolina bench, the Tar Heels. Hoping for a little luck here. I tell you, Pam Thomas is going to go on down in tradition with all the great players they've had at Louisiana Tech. One of her idols, Teresa Witherspoon, who was a two-time All-American and Olympian, and Venus Lacey, Nora Lewis, Pam Gant, Kim Mulkey, who's on the bench, Kim Mulkey Robinson, Janice Lawrence, who was a fabulous player, an Olympian in '84, Angela Turner, Lori Scott, Jennifer White. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But North Carolina has set their own tradition this year. Lawrence will inbound it. Takes another timeout. Good defense by Louisiana Tech. Seven tenths of a second left. We'll be back. Tech on top by two. Twenty nine percent. This. We're back at the Richmond Coliseum. That tells the story. Seven tenths left. Louisiana Tech that much away from a national championship which would be their third Carolina hoping for some luck and the perfect shot to give them their first ever women's championship. This is their first ever final four no matter what happens both these teams outstanding years Tech at 31 and 3 Carolina at 32 and 2. But it's all come down to this one final play Lawrence will inbound it. Charlotte Smith is watched by Walker that freshman has contributed so well defensively today and contributing points as well. Jones is outside Samson is outside Crawley is in the paint. North Carolina has one chance only. And it's got to be quick. Now Kendra Neal with. Some they're, counsel they're, from uh, Vicki Johnson. Taking the defense off the ball. Here's the shot, Charlotte Smith. Marion Jones overcome. Well, watch the play, Tim. 
you almost wonder when they start the shot clock because it should go right away. She really cocks it. She's got plenty of time to cock it, but she gets it off in plenty of time. And boy, is that sweet for the Tar Heels. But I tell you, Louisiana Tech played an incredible game. Sylvia Hatchell, the only coach to win an AIAW championship, an NAIA championship, and now an NCAA championship. Charlotte Smith, the six footer from Shelby, North Carolina, who was brilliant yesterday, was sensational in the second half here today, set a record for rebounds, and makes the shot of her young life. North Carolina's Tar Heels for the first time are the champions of women's basketball. Let's go to Lee Zeidman. Tim Ryan, it is absolute insanity here on the floor. Sylvia, seven tenths of a second. There was little or nothing to do. You went to the lady who had helped you inside with the rebound, Charlotte Smith, an incredible shot. Oh, it, was, it was wonderful. I just, all I can say is thank you, Lord, thank you. And I was praying so hard on the sidelines. We changed the call twice. And I said, hey, we're going for the win, not the tie. And so we, went, we were going for the three-pointer. What a way to finish for these seniors. They were last in the ACC as freshmen, now national champ. Hey, that's what this, this team's been about all season. They're just, you know, they never say die. They're just a tremendous bunch of young ladies. An incredible victory. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. These teams were tied at the half, and it turns out a one-point victory for the Tar Heels of Carolina, 33-2 on the year. The Chevrolet players of the game. Pam Thomas of Louisiana Tech, she was brilliant, second half particularly, 15 points and four rebounds. But it was Charlotte Smith from Carolina, 20 points, including the winning points, 23 rebounds, a championship game record. The check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund. Here's the last look at the last shot. The Tar Heels earned a lot of respect. Charlotte Smith, victory for the Tar Heels. They are the champions.